This message comes from NPR sponsor Webflow, empowering designers to build custom websites in a visual canvas without the need for code. It takes the pressure off of engineers so that marketing and design teams can manage your site faster. Webflow, the modern way to build for the web. From National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, we're broadcasting this week from the unclarification department here at Car Talk Plaza. Well, I mean, you are a master at declarifying, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to give you a little test here to see if, since you know what declarification is, maybe you can go the opposite direction. It's very difficult. And I have here a list very of difficult. common everyday proverbs or sayings uh -huh. um, that that have been old saws adages am i one that's say? it yeah. that have been unclarified by i think it's the person who sent it patricia amayo okay i'll start you off with an easy one tenants of vitreous abodes ought to hurl no lithophilus oh. fragments yes people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones of course okay Precipitancy creates prodigality. Haste makes way. You got it. They're going to get harder now. Yeah, I can tell that. <laughs> Softening me up with the easy ones. Compute not your immature galanacines prior to their being produced. Oh, don't count your chickens before You they got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's getting tougher. Are you ready? Cleave gramineous matter for fodder during the period that the orb of the day is refulgent. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> People in glass houses shouldn't trust <laughs> uh, I'll give it to you again. Cleave. It took me a while to get this one. Cleave. Cleave. Well, cleave can mean either cleave or cleave. It can. That's right. Yeah. Gramineous. Graminius, G R A M I N E O U S. That's the key word. Yeah, well, that's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> Graminius matter for fodder during the period that the orb of the day is refulgent. That's another tough word. Orb I of the day. I didn't really know what that the meant. Orb of the day is right. Gee, I'm going to have to give, Uncle. <laughs> Make hay while the sun shines. Oh. <laughs> What was hay? I think. Graminious matter. Oh, sure. Sure. Grain. I guess. Yeah, I, I, I I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I mean I'm mean, i guessing. She doesn't give us the answers. That's what I figured no, out. I, 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 I'll buy it. Oh, this is good. You'll get this right away. Consolidated. People in glass houses. <laughs> <laughs> Consolidated. You and I maintain ourselves erect. Separated, we defer to the law. United, of gravity. we stand. Divided, divided we, we fall. fall. And uh, if it walks like a duck, talks like <laughs> a duck. <laughs> Ooh. A feathered creature clasped in the manual members is equal in value to a ah. brace in the bosky growth. <laughs> a bird in the hand <laughs> you is it. worth two in the bush. <laughs> but I mean, this is great. I mean, think about what it took to declarify the individual of. And the you think it's easy every week. <laughs> The individual of the class Aves, arriving before the appointed time, seizes the in invertebrate animal of the group Vermes. Oh, the early bird catches, catches the, the worm. worm. Of course. I took Latin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another Look, one. Look, come on, one. my hair's starting to smoke. <laughs> All right, here's the last one. Fondness for notes of exchange constitutes the tuberous structure of all satanically inspired principles. Oh, uh, 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 idle hands are the devil's workshop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Uh, Fondness for notes of exchange. Notes of exchange. Money is the root of all evil. You've got it! <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we now... We now have a what, new... What, do I, do I get awarded my PhD in <laughs> obfuscation and clarification now? You, man. Can we take a call? We, we all have a deeper appreciation now for what it takes to go the other way. <sighs> it's hard. Anyway, if you have a question about... <laughs> nice job, Frank. <laughs> a car or anything else, the number to call is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Caroline from Washington, D.C. Caroline with a K! <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't there any Carolines with a K? That would be a possibility. I guess. It's a little bit too Teutonic, I believe. 
Caroline, mm -hmm. are you a lawyer or a politician? Neither. Great. What do you want? <laughs> I just bought a Subaru Impreza, and I love it. It's, it is a standard, though, and I have heard from many ex-boyfriends that I ride my clutch. But I can't tell that I do, and I don't know how to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Mm, how many miles have you had it? Well, probably now only about 900. You're 900. about 100 miles away from a clutch. <laughs> well, <laughs> does, do, 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 when you're uh, driving this thing, mm -hmm. does it smell like there's a potholder burning? <laughs> you know, if you, if you leave a potholder too close to the fire, <laughs> yeah. or the handle to a coffee pot. So if I smell something burning, I know I'm riding the clutch. You well, know, let's yeah. start off from scratch here. <laughs> well, uh, when, you, when, when you start out okay. from scratch. Okay, because that actually is where I think that I may have a problem. You step on the gas and you start to take your foot off the clutch. Mm -hmm. How often do you stall the vehicle? <laughs> I actually, well, here's the thing. When I put it in first and I am starting out, just because this engine is much more powerful than any engine I've had before, and I don't know if this has anything to do with it, it jerks a lot. So I tend to sort of ride the clutch uh, when I'm in first. I mean, I do admit that I do that, but then as soon as I get into second or third, I mean, as soon as I shift, I have my foot off the clutch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but a baboon could do it then. I mean, <laughs> the, I mean, not, not to, you know, diminish your abilities, but, but the hard thing is taking off from a dead stop. Mm -hmm. And once you're moving, shifting and clutching in second, third, fourth, and whatever is, child's is, play. is easy. Okay. You know, so if someone has told you that you're riding the clutch, uh -huh. you probably are. <laughs> Uh, no. you, this is your first stick shift car? No, I had one when I first learned how to drive, but I haven't really driven one of my own for like the last seven years. But you've been driving boyfriend's cars. Exactly. And this might be the reason that none of these relationships has lasted. You're burning their clutches out. I'm dumping her, man. She burned my clutch out. Well, I never cared when it was their clutch, but now that it's mine, I care. And as you're driving along and shifting from one gear to the next, uh -huh. what what happens to your foot between shifts? Well, I mean, it's not, I know it should be sitting on the floor, and it's not sitting on the floor, but it's definitely not pushing down the clutch. But it's on the clutch pedal. I would say it's hovering in a flexed position. <laughs> Ready to like a, like, a, like a crouching tiger. <laughs> Caroline, go <come> on. <laughs> Tell us the truth But I, I'm more concerned about your technique from a dead stop. <laughs> and my brother is going to tell you how to do it the right way. Okay. Because he has come up with the perfect technique okay. for doing this right. Okay. Well, I, the, the way I always teach new drivers, and, and there may be something wrong with your clutch, and if there is, and it's uh -huh. chattering or whatever, then uh -huh. then uh, you're going to need to replace it anyway, and you might as well just burn it out. And that would explain why you've adopted this uh, unusual, uh, destructive method of driving. <laughs> Take it. Tell them. Tell them what you really think. I mean, you know, don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> but go into a go into a parking lot or a uh -huh. very quiet side street, uh -huh. and with the car stopped on a level surface, uh -huh. step on the clutch, put it in first, and practice just taking off without using the gas pedal at all. At all. Tuck that right foot right up under your seat. It's not going to stall. No, no, that's the tr that's the idea. You're okay. gonna it, it's it is gonna stall the first seven times. <laughs> but after you've done it enough times, you will find what's called the friction point, and you want to. And your goal is to get your foot lifted off the pedal uh -huh. and to that what's called friction point. That is the point at which the car begins to move and wants to stall, mm -hmm. without in fact stalling it. Okay. When you're confident that you have found that engagement point and you can find it every time. Uh huh. Then you can begin to give it gas, but you only begin to give it gas when you've reached that engagement point. Like after it's already moving. You, yeah, as soon as it starts to move, as soon as you reach that point where the car wants to go, then you can give it gas, and the amount of gas you give it is proportional to how fast you're lifting your foot off the clutch. Okay. If you're lifting your foot off slowly, you give it very little gas. If you're trying to accelerate hard and you're lifting your foot off the clutch and you're stepping on the gas pedal fast, uh -huh. you want to get your foot off the clutch as fast. As fast. Okay. Although, otherwise, you're riding the clutch. And burning it up. <laughs> so go, go, hang up and go practice that. I will, I will. <laughs> and if, in fact, it chatters badly when you try to take off like that without giving it gas, there may be something wrong, wrong with, with the, the clutch. clutch. Okay. And it's not you at all, and all those boyfriends were wrong. Well, I like to believe and, that anyway. And it's good that you dumped them. They were nothing but trouble. <laughs> See you, Caroline. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Sherry from Waldorf, Maryland. Sherry? Yes. 
You know, the Waldorf salad was invented in Waldorf, Maryland. Did you know that? Uh, you know why you didn't know it? Because I just made it up. You did. <laughs> well, I even know that the Waldorf salad was invented at the Waldorf Hotel in New York City. Yeah, we don't eat Waldorf salad in Waldorf. 41st Street. We eat crabs in Waldorf. Fifth Avenue. <laughs> you trying to get a free room? <laughs> I think they tore it down about 15, No, no, it's ago. still there. It's still there? Anyway, Sherry, what can we do for you? I have a 1995 Hyundai. It's an Accent. Accent. Okay. You know, it's funny. Whenever I read that name written on the back of the car, yeah. it seems to me that they took great pains to make it appear affluent. Really? That there's some, some subliminal... <laughs> message going wow. on here. The car does not, is certainly not screaming affluence at Maybe you. Maybe it's effluent. Effluent would be better. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. this, this is too much of my car. It's been a great car. But just since Friday, I started getting a noise that sounds like this. Thunk, 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 thunk. Ooh. And it happens when I shift, go from first gear into second gear. It doesn't seem to happen when it's sitting on neutral or if it's just starting out. So you must be moving to get the noise. You have to be moving. Yes. And when you say when you move from first to second, so if you start off in first gear, and you drive some number of feet, say 50 feet, 20 feet, during that time there is no noise. Yes, that's that's right. Then you step on the clutch, you take it out of first gear, has it started making noise yet? No, only after I've gotten into second gear. You get it into second and as you're letting the clutch out in second gear, it starts making this noise. Glum, 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 glum. Um, actually, it makes the noise after I've disengaged, and then into third, and then all the way to fifth, if I continue on. Mm. She's going to be a tough nut to crack. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a tough nut. <laughs> uh, How about this? I'm, I was going to take the approach. Yeah. That the noise is also there in first gear. She me, just me too. I'm not hear hearing it. it. You're just not hearing yeah. it because the engine is revving up so so hard. Yeah. Is there, yeah. Is, there a, is there a chance of that, Sherry? <laughs> yes, there I, is a, a high probability of that. I hope so. Because without that, we're done. We have no ready <laughs> answer. For, if, if you said that it made it in second gear only... Yeah. For example. Uh-huh. Then we could live with we can live with that, uh-huh. right? I could live with right. that. But the fact that it makes it in... Second, third, third, fourth, fourth, and fi- fifth. No, I can't live with How that. How about reverse? No. I had not noticed it. In, well, again. Again. I, the I engine's think, revving so much. I think. Here's the, here's the common thread. You're not going fast enough in first gear to hear the noise. But in the other gears, you are going fast enough. Well, that could be. And I'm going to suggest uh-huh. what you have is a bad... Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Is rubber involved? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, rubber is involved. I think you have a bad tire. I do too. Really? Now we could we could ask you Don't! if the noise speeds up as the car does, the frequency of it. No. <laughs> we could ask you that, but we won't. Okay. So we won't ask. we won't ask you that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait wait a minute. <laughs> What do you mean it doesn't? So in second, of in second up. gear it's boom, 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 and in third gear it's not boom, 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 and in fourth gear as you go faster it's not boom, 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 boom. No, it's actually thunk, 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 thunk the whole time. So uh, Henny's tutu. <laughs> Take it all back. It's all not right. a tire. It's not a tire. A wheel is falling off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tire. Oh man. Any idea what part of the car it's coming from? I can, it's almost like I can feel it from the dashboard. Who put you up to this? <laughs> Who put you up to this call? <laughs> no, no, no. Someone, someone paid you off. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. You're the greatest, guys. We listen to you all the time. My well, husband. you won't be listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. All right. Is it, could you think something's loose? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, something's it, loose. It could be something even like your bumper is loose or there's a caliper that's loose. And those things wouldn't necessarily... Uh, be, but they wouldn't. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be regular. It wouldn't be regular like that. It would be an occasional. Sometimes it would do it. Sometimes not. Because think about it. If the car has to speed up mm-hmm. from zero miles an hour to some other speed, then all the pieces, including the engine, which make the car speed up, speed up. If one of those were bad, or making the noise, it too would speed up. Oh. 
right? For example, if but you had a doesn't. bad axle or a bad tire, let's say you had a bubble on your tire, then which is our original assumption, then as you sped up, the noise would go from bump, bump, bump to bump, 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 until finally it would be so fast that you wouldn't be able to tell, but you would there would be a noticeable increase in the frequency of the bumps. Right. But you don't have that. No. Permission to which, treat the which, witness as hostile. Which you're tells wrong. us that you're lying. <laughs> 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 How about this? Consider the heating system and a pneumatically operated door. Oh, boom, flap. Boom, flap. Boom. I like boom. it. Okay, Sherry, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be moving. Why? Because you got plenty of vacuum if you're not moving. This is pretty bold. Oh, I'm stretching, but this just is bad. Work with me here. Work with I me. I can't. I can't. <laughs> work with me. It's it, bad. I like it. I mean, what I don't like uh, it's about it's a loose it. antenna. It's something like that. Well, how about I drop you all a postcard and let you know what I find? Oh uh, man! Oh, that, by a that postcard, would be great. You don't have to send us a twenty-page document. <laughs> no, Maybe. she's, she's going to have to. She's going to just say you were right. It was the door. No, it's, a, it's the door of the car that's loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have no idea, Sherry. I'll still listen. Oh, thanks. all right. Thanks anyway. Call us. Let us know what you find. I will. God. See you later. Bye. <laughs> All right, look, to help you remember last week's puzzler, I'm going to ask you a few fill-in-the-blank kind of questions. Go right ahead. You ready? Now, each of these words is a hint. So here's your first hint. Uncle Nunzio used to run blank. Numbers. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and are you ready for the next yeah. one? Your IOUs aren't worth the blank they're printed on. Paper. Good. I'm doing good. And if you ever get an answer right on this show, it's purely a matter of blank. Luck? It's close enough. I, I was looking for chance. All right. So those are the clues that I'm supposed to figure out the puzzler now? No, those were just kind of random thoughts I was having. <laughs> yes, yes. The puzzler was about numbers, paper, and chance. And I'll have the answer in just a minute. And even though Javanese hot coal walkers wince in pain whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, a truly affordable online counseling service. Fill out a questionnaire online and get matched with a licensed counselor best suited to your mental health needs. Whether it's depression, anxiety, or trauma, BetterHelp will help you overcome what stands in the way of your happiness. Learn more at BetterHelp.com and get 10% off your first month with promo code CARTALK. BetterHelp. Get help anytime, anywhere. This message comes from Pineapple Street Studios' new podcast, Stay Away from Matthew McGill. The story of a man who dies alone in the woods and leaves behind a box full of wild stories. When reporter Eric Menel finds this box, he becomes consumed by it until it totally changes his life and family. New episodes are available every week wherever you get your podcasts. Binge all episodes exclusively on the new Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Cell phone footage shows police killing unarmed black people. Protesters take to the streets, rinse and repeat for a decade. Why? Everyone moves on. A blunt reminder that we've been here before on Code Switch from NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, mm-hmm. car repair, mm-hmm. and uh, the answer to last week's puzzler. And th- this was a mathematical puzzler sent in by Norm Lydon from Franktown, Colorado. And what I loved about it and what leapt out at me mm. from among all the puzzlers I had to look at, it was written on a piece of paper in pencil. Oh, yeah. I remember it. And I almost dismissed it as being some fourth grade. He might be a fourth grader for all I know, but... Fourth graders are smart. They sure are. (laughs) But there's nothing smarter than a seventh grader. (laughs) Yeah, they know all their state capitals and everything. (laughs) Not that that's ever really come in handy, but... No. uh, Unless you're on Jeopardy. I mean, I I was watching Jeopardy the other night, and there was a woman who... I mean, she knew everything, and I said, Mamma mia! How smart is she? And then I said... She quit school in seventh grade. I said, she's as smart as the average seventh grader. School should end at the seventh grade. (laughs) It it did for some of us. (laughs) Okay, here it is. Yeah. Three different Mm. numbers are chosen at random and written on each of three slips of paper. 
The slips are then placed face down on a table. And the objective is to choose the piece of paper with the largest number. And here are the rules. Are you coming back to you now? I remember this. You can turn over any slip of paper you want, and you can look at the number written on it. If you think this is the largest, you're done. Mm -hmm. You keep it. Otherwise, you discard it, and you, you can't go back and get it. But you can turn over another slip, again, either one you want. And if you think that's the largest number, you can keep that, and the game is over. If you don't, you discard it, and then you're stuck with the third number, no matter what it is. And the numbers can be anything at all. Yeah, from a dollar to what? Infinity. Infinity. Inf infinite dollars. So, like what my wife spent. <laughs> <laughs> so I present this here game to my brother Tommy and to Vinny. Tommy says... Is your, 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 I remember what I said. I said, doesn't matter. You said, I think what you said is, that's pretty stupid. Your <laughs> chance of getting the highest number is one in three. Yeah. Vinny, on the other hand, says, I don't think so. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I think I can do better than that. <laughs> is Tommy right or is Vinny right? Is there a strategy by which you can improve the odds from one in three? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a puzzler if I weren't wrong? <laughs> yeah, I should let you be right once in a while. You should. Yeah, it would be. I mean, you could have just as easily said, I could have reversed Vinny the said, ah, oh, it's only one in three, and my smart brother said, ah, ha, ha. Aha. But did you do that? No. Well, Vinny's strategy. I mean, people are walking around the world thinking that I'm dumb. Well, Vinny's strategy. <laughs> A and lot. you have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's strategy, in fact, changes the odds for him to one in two. Oh, yeah. You pick one of the pieces of paper at random. Mm. You look at the number. No matter what it is, you throw it away. You then pick any other piece of paper. And if the number is greater than the first one you picked, you're done. You right. say, that's what I think this is the highest. Exactly. Right. Okay. And you keep that. And if it isn't, you throw that away and you take the third and whatever it is. Well, let's say for the sake of simplicity that the three slips of paper say $1,000 on one, $500 on another, and $10 on the third one. Yeah. Okay. Now, his strategy is you pick up the first piece of paper, no matter what it is, you, you remember it, but you throw it away and you don't keep it. So if he picks the one with a th with a thousand, he can't he can't possibly win because no matter what else he does, he's going to lose. So let's forget those two cases. Let's look at what happens if he picks up the five hundred one first. I'm with you. If he picks the ten dollar one second, he throws it away. In which case, he ends off going to the thousand dollar one. Whoopee! If he by chance picks the, if, again, if he picks the five hundred one first, and he by chance goes to the thousand one next, his rule says his rule says you keep it. Keep it. And, and he wins again. And he wins again. Pretty good. Not if he picks up the $10 one first, first, his rule says throw, throw it away. away and pick up another one. If he should be unfortunate enough to pick up the one that says 500 he's going to keep it. He's going to keep it and he's going to lose. Right. However, if his second choice is not the $500 one, but the $1,000 one, he's going to keep that. He's going to keep that. And it turns out if he does this, you look at all the scenarios, Tommy's method will allow him to win one time out of three. And Vinny... Vinny won. will win three times out of six. So Vinny That's wins. almost half. It is <laughs> in some countries. <laughs> so if you want to see this, you can go to our website and you can stare at the screen for 15 to 20 minutes till you get it. <laughs> Do we have a winner? Yep. The winner this week is Alfred Kleck from Fairbanks, Alaska. And for having his answer selected at random from among all the correct answers that we got, Alfred gets a $26 gift certificate to the Shameless Commerce Division at cartalk.com, with which he can get an embroidered Cartalk baseball cap. Did we really get a whole wheelbarrow full? We did. We Congratulations. Have a, we have a new puzzler coming up in the third half of the show, but in, in the meantime, if you have a question about your car or a puzzler of your own, give us a call at 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-227. 8255, a lawyer on Car Talk. My name's Mark Friedman. Hi, Mark. I'm from uh, Brooklyn. Yes. Though I don't speak exactly like it. You don't no, have to. you don't speak Brooklynese at all. No, I, I've been trying to get the hang of it, but it's, uh, it's a little tricky. What's, What's your the, problem? You're, you're a transplant or what? I'm a transplant. Yeah, you have to start with some crucial words. How do you say the word D-O-G? Uh, dog. Uh, no. Oh, no, come it's on. It's dog. 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 Okay, how do you oh. say H-E-R? Her. Her. 
Huh. Yeah, you're getting it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about, wait, wait, one more. And one other word you need to work on. But it's C-O-F-F-E-E. crucial. C-O-F-F-E-E. C-O-F-F-E-E. Yeah. T- e- oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's really sad. I've been living here for all these years, and I really have no idea how to how to say it. Right? You have no idea. All right, listen to me. Coffee. Co- coffee. 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 The first syllable is very important. Coffee. 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 You got it, man. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for calling, man. <laughs> so, what's on your mind? Okay. Um, well, I, I'm calling about uh, peace of mind, really. Which I don't have at the moment. Oh. Um, I have a Dodge Caravan. I got it used, and it's great. But uh, something I always do when I get into a car or that I drive a car for a while, I always want to check to make sure that that inertia reel uh, shoulder belt yeah, yeah. engage. Yeah. Right. And I've never gotten mine to engage. Uh, oh, I know I in my older cars, I've, I have always done that. Um, Somebody's told me that there's some kind of mechanism. Wait a minute. Now, how have you attempted to do it? Well, By pulling on it? Push. Well, okay, I put my hand between my chest and the shoulder belt and just, you know, jerk forward with my hand. Uh, it won't work that way. The old style, your old car, your old 72 Dart. Right, that's the wrong technique. Or 73 Dart or whatever you had before this thing had a seatbelt that worked on a centrifugal mechanism so you could yank on the on the belt and actually get it to lock up. Yes. This has an inertial mechanism, which basically is like a pendulum and requires that the vehicle jerk. Ah. Not the driver. Right. Okay. And not the belt. So you've got to, the way you've got to test this thing is to slam on the brake pedal. Fortunately, this design allows you freedom of movement in the car so that you can move around even pretty quickly without engaging the, the belt and having it you know, threaten to choke you as you go to change stations on the radio. Right. right. So, I mean, no, if yes, you... It's, it's nice. It's comfortable. Right. But, and it, but it always worried and, me. And it will work. You try it. You slam into the back of a cab someday, and you'll see how well that thing works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you won't have to slam into anything. If no, you, do I, I don't have to slam into something? No, no. But you'll have to slam on the brakes pretty hard, and when you do, you'll be pleasantly surprised that it will lock up, and then you'll require you know, a tracheotomy or something. Mine that I've been looking for for so long. Yeah, you've just been using the wrong testing technique. Yes. So slam on the pedal, and, and you'll see that it works. And if it doesn't work, replace it, because it's important. But it, it will work. It, it sh- I mean, it should actually engage. If, you, if you're doing, like, uh, 10 miles an hour, and you really hit the pedal... You stab mm-hmm. the pedal. Not a gentle application of pressure, right. but you really yeah. stab it. A panic stop. Right. You should feel it engage. If you don't, then something is wrong with it. Great. Well, that will really make me feel better. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Anyway, Mark, you are all set. Okay, well, thank yeah. you very much. Have a cup of coffee on us, and, <laughs> and be careful with the dog. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Thanks. Eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eighty two fifty five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, my name is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Fargo, North Dakota. Oh. Oh yeah, far away North Dakota. What's <laughs> up, Nancy? Uh, my boyfriend and I are having a running discussion about his car, which is uh, served him well. He's got an '86 Toyota MR2, five-speed manual transmission. I know it well. Mm-hmm. But we're experiencing some problems with it. When we start it up now, there's a, a lot of smoke coming out of the tailpipe, mm. and it's burning or using oil. We need to change, put in oil, a couple of quarts every couple of weeks. That's because he drove it like an animal. Before, before you had a chance to meet this guy <laughs> and civilize him. Tame him, you might say. <laughs> Tame him, yes. Yeah. I'll relay that information. Yeah, he, he drove it like a complete maniac, yeah. and he wrecked it. How many... You say two quarts every couple of weeks. How many miles is that, roughly? Well, we're only driving around in town here. It's Ooh. a very short commute, so it's city driving. What what's we're experiencing in driving it is on the tachometer, every time it gets to about, I think, three, if it's 30,000 or 3,000 3. RPMs, yeah. um, the car is hesitating or, or stuttering or lurching a little bit. That's a separate problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's but that pales problem. in comparison to this problem. <laughs> oh, okay. No, this is disastrous. The, the yeah. smoke is disastrous. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you might only, in those two weeks, you might only be driving a couple of hundred miles, right? Oh, yeah. So we're talking that. about a quart every hundred miles or right. less. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, what's the nature of this running discussion, as you called it? I mean, well, I what's your that, part of this discussion? Yeah. Uh, I, I owned a 67 VW, brand new, 67. Drove yeah. it in high school. Kept rebuilding and restoring. Yeah. And loved doing that. And I yeah. think maybe, you know, he still loves this car. Perhaps he should uh, investigate a thorough service on it. Yeah, we'll And see. maybe even rebuild it or whatever it would be required. I, and I appreciate that it would be a completely more, you know, complicated engine, completely different process. But he's 
thinking more along the lines of, well, this has probably just seen its day, and well, mm. we should probably just let it run down without having any kind of major well, investment how, in it. How do you figure in this? Uh, you, is, is he looking to you for some kind of financial contribution? Oh, no, 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 not at all. So it's this just, is com- it's just a, it's, a theoretical, uh, philosophical discussion. And, I mean, what it is is the, the basic difference between certain kinds of people like my brother and myself. <laughs> Chiselers <laughs> and generous people. <laughs> my, my brother, like your boyfriend, believes in dumping everything at the first possible opportunity. <laughs> and you and I, the more reasonable, sane, more gentler, kinder, the gentler, kinder p- p- part of the world, believe that you shouldn't just be throwing away all this stuff. Fix everything and keep it forever. Well, I think he has very uh, a lot of very gentle and tender qualities. I will say that. I'm sure he does if he's <laughs> anything like me. What do you mean? You just referred to him as an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> well, he's a gentler, kinder animal. Well, yeah. Let me explain. Let me explain something. Explain to you. me, Lucy. Everyone has built into them. Whether you're, a, it's particularly worse if you if you're a male. But everyone has built in aggressions. Yes. And I think if you find a a method of venting your aggressions, then you can be a kinder, gentler person in your personal relationships. Yeah. And you can be an animal. To, if you had to be mean to something. Wouldn't you rather have... What's your boyfriend's name, Nancy? Henry. Henry. Hank. No, no, no. Henry. Oh, no. Henry. 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 She's Henry. Okay. Henry from Fargo. <laughs> well, Henry might be a, such a wonderful person because he's getting the opportunity to vent his anger and frustrations and and and, and ridding himself of testosterone poisoning by driving his MR2 into the ground. That is the most and if that's, bogus theory and if I have ever heard. that's what it takes to make Henry a nice guy... No. <laughs> then MR2s are expendable. That does they not, keep making them, man. That does a, not make off. people nice guys by venting their aggressions. We're dealing here with a basic question of evolution. Some people have <laughs> recently fallen out of the trees, and some people haven't. <laughs> well, can we get back to so the you story? suggest that Henry just fell out of the trees. <laughs> well, I mean, if he's an animal and he's truly an animal... And I'm not talking about Henry particularly, because Nancy knows Henry better than we do. But I'm talking in general. This theory of yours that you've expounded on several times is complete bull. <laughs> you don't vent aggressions and then become nice because you vented your aggressions by shooting little innocent animals or something, or by whacking baseball bats around. No, you are you do that because you can't help yourself. You are a Mr. Mis- Hyde. And you're not really going to turn into a Dr. Jekyll without the special uh, kickapoo juice. That's it, I'm going to strangle him. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think that Henry is worth saving... Absolutely. <laughs> then... Love must conquer all. Yeah, I mean, I think you do have a, a valid point, and if you can talk Henry into it, fine, but I don't think you're going to. Well, let's say that I can. Well, what are you thinking? What? If About you can't, the then he's going to sell it, and he's going to buy another one. He's going to wreck that one, too, because he's what? An animal. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you he's not. <laughs> See, he's not. So I guess he's basically a nice guy. He may just be misinformed. Oh. No, he's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I but I know the type, believe out? me. I mean, that's what made him buy that car in the first place. Otherwise, sure. he would have bought a Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. He bought it because he wanted to wreck it. And yeah. if that's where he gets his jollies, well, that's fine. Well, the, can we can we redeem this in any in any way based on the problems as I've described them? Well, what, what's, what's your suggestion? Oh, oh no, it's, it's a new engine that it needs. New engine. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if, uh, did we forget to mention that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think we forgot to mention that. No, it's a new engine that it needs. Okay. Because and... he wrecked it because he's what an animal. <laughs> so, and, and I suppose he could make an argument that why should I spend three or four thousand bucks for a new engine, when in fact for a mere thirty thousand bucks I can get a whole new car. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I think he has to accept, if he really wants to get rid of the thing, then, you know, and, and, and it's his money, don't forget, that he's spending on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then uh, you ought to say, Henry, go for it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. kind of how I do feel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, and I think he should get a new one. Nancy, you're such a sweet person. No, no, no. I, I think probably I've misrepresented myself. Well, you may no, have. I can tell I'm just... the beast. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell just by your voice. I'm the wild, untamed savage. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what he loves about you. <laughs> You're just like the MR2. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you start burning oil, he's going to dump you too. <laughs>
<laughs> Good luck, Nancy. I expect Nancy. to get this comprehensive uh, <laughs> advice from you. I'm sorry. Well, I did get carried away. Either there. that or find yourself a nice accountant. They don't wreck cars. Oh, no. I'm I'm definitely staying with this one. Oh, okay. really? Oh, yeah. He's okay. the guy for you, He's huh? He's the guy for Very you? Very serious. Terrific. Yeah, a Plymouth Belvedere. Rusty, broken down a car. And even though jurors everywhere beg to be sequestered whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from Vimeo Create. Make professional videos for your business using Vimeo's pre-built templates. Just drop your footage into one of hundreds of templates, and their smart tools will generate a professional-looking video in seconds. Create and distribute to your audience in minutes. More at vimeo.com slash create. This message comes from Pineapple Street Studios' new podcast, Stay Away from Matthew McGill. The story of a man who dies alone in the woods and leaves behind a box full of wild stories. When reporter Eric Menel finds this box, he becomes consumed by it until it totally changes his life and family. New episodes are available every week wherever you get your podcasts. Binge all episodes exclusively on the new Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. With civil unrest, the pandemic, and the economic crisis, you want to know what's happening right when you wake up. And that's why there is Up First, the news you need in about 10 minutes from NPR News. Listen every day. Ha, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the, the new puzzler. And, yeah. and this just came in. Let me see the date here. December 2002. <laughs> <laughs> from Paul Mulek, and he sent in a few puzzles before, and I've I've used them, and this is this is, a, this oh, is yeah. pretty good. I'll just I think you should send them something. He asks all the time. <laughs> uh, anyway, here we go. Yeah, go ahead. Old Mister Jones lay gasping on his deathbed, just as his wife, his very young wife, was about to give birth to their first child. The family lawyer, you Lewis Dewey, was summoned so that Mister Jones could recite his last will and testament. Oh. Right, because yeah. he's, he's going to have a, a new member of the family. Yeah. Right? So he says to, 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 uh, to the lawyer, if my child is a boy, then I will leave two-thirds of my estate to my son and one-third to my wife. Oh. Ready? If my child is a girl, then I leave two-thirds of my estate to my wife and one-third to my daughter. Well, I don't know why he's chose to do this, but this business. is Mr. Jones, and this is his business. That's right. So Mr. Dewey creates the document on his laptop computer and prints it out so Jones can sign it. Jones, I know the, I know the question. Mr. Jones grips the pen weakly oh. in his shaking hand. Yeah. All right. He applies his signature to the will and then <laughs> lights out for Mr. Jones. He croaks. Twins. Moments later, <laughs> one of each, <laughs> with the help of the attending midwife, Mrs. Jones gives birth to twins. I knew one it. One <laughs> boy and one girl. Yeah. How, if you are, you, Lewis Dewey, how would you divide the estate? Now, if you think you know the answer. <laughs> I can see it. Write it on the roof of a Cloter Farms 20-foot virgin cedar handcrafted imperial pagoda gazebo. With clear wood finish, three season windows and screens, teak decking, and of course, slate roof. <laughs> and install it at Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our Fair City. Matt 02238. Or you can email us your answer from cartalk.com. But if you have a question right now, give us a call. The number is 888 Car Talk. That's 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. My name's uh, John McCormack, and I'm uh, calling from uh, Florida. Hi, John. Florida. Uh, yeah, from from Florida. Yeah, we we picked it up right from your Florida accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, we talk funny down here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have a 1986 um, Chevrolet uh, pickup truck. It's got a 350 uh, engine in it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I use it occasionally for towing. And it's got this. Um, it's got into this habit of, of uh, occasionally, not all the time, losing power and um, surging and losing power 
and it it gives off a noise like a, a, a buddy rich concert underneath the uh, hood. <laughs> really? Yeah, it, it's, it's entertaining, but buddy uh, rich, huh? Yeah, uh, uh, but um, it's yeah. also disconcerting because then it'll quit doing it. And whenever I take it to a mechanic, it quits doing it, and they they kind of look at me strange, you know. Hmm. So it sounds like it's rapping. Is that was that would that be a fair description? Um, no, more jazz than rapping. Jazz. <laughs> no, oh, I didn't mean rapping. <laughs> I suppose one has to choose choose his words carefully these days. <laughs> yeah, a banging sound. Yeah, it, it, it's clattering and um, and surging, losing power. Uh, I took it to one mechanic, and he said it was the uh, uh, definitely the fuel pump needed replacing. Well, that sounds good. So I did. I replaced the fuel pump, oh. but it, it, it still occasionally does it. I took another mechanic uh, said that maybe um, I had a, a little bit of dirt under um, a lifter. Well, it's, it's funny that you should mention that. I just wrote on my paper here. My brother can attest to this. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bring home a loaf of loaf bread. Loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> you can read my mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the clattering noise is coming from a lifter that's collapsing, which would account for a significant loss of power and the noise and the sudden disappearance of both. Yeah. Uh, uh. And, and the, maybe the lifter isn't collapsing. I think rather a valve is sticking. A sticking valve. A sticking valve. Mm. Uh. Now, I'm going to guess that you've got about 125,000 miles on this. Yeah, at least. At least. At least. At least. You don't know because you unhooked the odometer. Hoping well, to trade it in someday. <laughs> well, it's been around so many times. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to decipher the yeah. uh, the it, numbers. It now, might be you know? two twenty five. Is that it? Could be. It could it, be. I put probably thirty thousand miles a year on it. You know what it's time for? STP. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we can get you maybe a month to six months out of that if you throw a couple of cans or gallons of right and, and for an extra 10 bucks we'll touch up the x-rays too <laughs> no you uh it doesn't use any oil it doesn't no well that's no, okay that's cool it doesn't have to use any oil to have to have a sticky valve you could have so much carbon build up in right. the valve train that you get a sticky valve and it would most likely happen under the severest conditions that is towing, towing a trailer right. hot weather Climbing a hill, even though there are no hills in Florida. Right. But there is hot weather and there is towing. Right. Right. And that's that's when it's likely to happen. And I suspect that you're going to have to try to use some kind of a cleaner. There are various cleaners on the market that will that will break up some of these deposits. Like, um... Uh, well, wants... Chevron, Tecron, you know, they come into the uh, 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 description of fuel injector cleaners, although it's not really a fuel injector. It's a fuel system cleaner, but it's designed to clean carbon deposits off the valve train. Yeah, I'd go to an auto parts store. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, we use a stuff called 44K. And I don't know who it's... Suggested uh, turpentine, um, at the oil change, uh, fill the crankcase with turpentine, start it up for a, a minute or so, and then hmm. drop the turpentine out of it. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I uh, uh, no, I, I, I actually tried that one time. I didn't use turpentine. I used kerosene. Kerosene. kerosene that's what I meant. You can only do this, John, if yeah. you're willing to drive it right to the junkyard. <laughs> but the kerosene is not going to solve your problem because your problem is not down there. Your problem is up at the top of the engine, right? Where the valves are, I believe. Right. I right. believe. So you have to try one of these cleaners. And try to break up those carbon deposits yeah. on the valve, on the intake valves, so that the valve won't stick when the engine gets hot and is overworked. Yeah, I mean, you you do you might want to try both of these techniques because if the problem is in the lifter, then the lubrication system will get at it. But if the problem is in the valves, then it's the fuel system that's going to get at it. But under no circumstances put kerosene in your crankcase. What? Unless you told me to do it to my truck. You said, let's throw a couple of quarts of kerosene in it. And what do we end up doing to your truck? Junking it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See you, John. Okay, that sounds good. Hey, good, good luck. Good luck. Thank, thank Thanks you. for calling, John. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Funny accent they have in Florida, huh? It is, it is strange. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it either. <laughs> 1-888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi. Hello. This is Dinah from Magnolia, Arkansas. Dinah, that D-I-N-E-R? No. That's the way we spell it here. <laughs> Dana, D-A-N-A. Dana? Yes. Oh, I thought you had said Dinah. No. From Magnolia, 
Arkansas? Is that what you said? Yeah, Magnolia, Arkansas. Magnolia. Boy, that, Magnolia. What a, that conjures up the such imagery a, is just wonderful. Beautiful little town. I can see it. What now. is it, a toxic waste site or what? <laughs> <laughs> the little picket no. fences all over town and the magnificent magnolia trees. Yes. Of course, in, in, Ar- in Arkansas, you have the real magnolias. Uh-huh. We, have, we have the phony magnolias here. <laughs> we don't you, even have you them. You have southern magnolias. They're real here. Yeah, the ones where the leaves don't fall off. Yeah. Yeah, those are nice. Great. Anyway, Dana. Uh-huh. Da- Donna. Dinah. Dana. 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 Yeah. Dana. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Well, I have a Mazda RX-7, and any time I move it a short distance, it won't start up for about two days or so. Well, how short a distance? Like yeah, a like foot? If, I, if I just move it back and then pull it into another parking space in the morning when it hasn't been started before, yeah. it won't start up. It, mm. it won't even, like click or anything oh, it won't click it does nothing at all yeah nothing it's dead oh dead silence yeah. oh dead completely it's just dead the second time really yeah all right i don't know i thought my mom just had a death touch because she was the one who used to move it but then it happened with me so i figured it was something with the car <laughs> is this an automatic transmission yeah it's an automatic does not it, that that helps any but it just kills well, time you well, know does anything else not work at that moment no, that, that's all. Like if you did it at night, would the dome light be working? Have you ever noticed that? I've not noticed that. You've not noticed? Yeah, I've just quit moving it. I If I have to move it a short distance, I drive around the block first and then stop it. <laughs> how, how many times has it done this? Oh, it's like five or six times. Five or six yeah, times? Yeah, until we finally started realizing what was happening. And if you don't move it this short distance, but in fact drive it around the block, it's fine. It's you... fine, Yeah. Why does your mother move it? Well, <laughs> I mean, what's her problem? Yeah. Why don't you put it where she wants it in the first place and she won't have to move no, it? No, because she probably parks behind her mother's car and yeah. then she's going to move it out so her mother can get to work because Dana is just hanging around the house doing nothing. Exactly. So she pulls it back in and there you go. That's it. Am I on it? You're on it. Yeah. yeah that's it. Is the driveway in which this thing is parked inclined at all? Um, It is towards the end, but it's not parked on... So it's we, not there. Well, you're parked. It's level. Yeah. It's level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would have to... I think the question you asked was the right question, even though you don't know why. <laughs> Who? You're talking you're to talking me? You're talking to my brother. <laughs> I Whether, never know why. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think it has anything to do with this short distance business. You don't? Oh, I don't either. Okay. It has nothing to do with it. There's no explanation based on my vast knowledge of cars. He only has half. Or is it the, half fast? <laughs> <laughs> that could possibly make this happen. So I would have to conclude that there isn't any relationship between those two things, and that something else is happening, and you just happen to have noticed it when you've moved the okay, car. Okay, here's the a important question: How long has this been going on? Um, a couple of weeks, right? No, it's it's happened about. It's been the last year, but I haven't moved it. I mean, you know, I've started where. If I know I'm going to have to move it, I, I'll do it that night yeah. or something. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about it in the morning. So let me get this right. She moved... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to... Yeah, in my never-ending it... search for an answer... It is hard to understand. She, she moves the car. You come out 10 minutes later and it doesn't start? Right. What if you come out an hour later? It, it still won't start. How about right. the next morning? No, it won't start. Sometimes it... I don't really well, know. Well, if it never I started just, again. Yeah, so just, how do you finally get it started? We we always have to tow it to the guy, and I don't know what he does with it. Ah, uh, that's the important it. question. I'll well, bet he, he does. He well, sprays we, something in her. I really We'll don't. tell you what he did. How much did he charge you? I don't know. My dad took care of it. <laughs> Your father's paying the bills. Your mother's moving the car for you. What the hell do you what do? What do you do, Dana? <laughs> So what? And you're driving an RX-7? <laughs> I think my brother's question of, is this an automatic oh, transmission? No, I, no, I, no. So I Put I, it right. No, stop. I got it. You got I it. I got it. Yeah, I know I you it. do. I know you do. Your father had installed in this a secret <laughs> switch. When your mother moves the car, she flips this switch and it kills the car so you won't go gallivanting all over town, raising hell and causing trouble. <laughs> what, are you in school, Dana? No, I'm out now. You're well, out now. But yeah. you haven't got a decent have, job yet. You haven't been thrown out. You're just out for the I'm summer. Just out for the summer now. Oh, for the summer. Yeah. Are you gonna, have you got a job? <laughs> no. Who's going to pay for the RX-7? Well, it's really old. It's paid for. Oh, great. 
That's good. I, I do pay for gas and everything. Uh, here's what I would suggest. I, I suspect, I mean, the only thing that I can think of that would make this happen is there there is a device called a neutral safety switch, which makes the car not start if it's not in park or in neutral. Uh-huh. I'll bet a nickel that there's something wrong with that. And what's really happening is that somehow you're not putting it all the way into park. Uh-huh. Or it's not quite working right. Next time this happens, take the shift lever and move it back and forth, jiggle it, bang it, kick it, take it out of park, put it into neutral, and see if that makes it start. Well, I hate to badger the witness. Yes, go ahead. But we have to go back to square one. When you said that it doesn't do anything, it doesn't even click, you turn the key and you get no sound? Immaterial argumentative and something no, else this I can't is remember. Ver- this is material. Yeah, I've, I've turned it and nothing's happened. Now, other times I've turned it and it's kind of going like, rah, 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 you know. And it hasn't started or has started? It hasn't started. What I'm going to go to is either the neutral safety switch or a bad starter motor. And, and it could be just luck that when your mother moves it, it does this. I have no idea why. <laughs> but it, my guess is that the starter motor is the culprit. Ask Dad the next time, or Mom, the next, if you can locate the starter motor, the next time you try to start it and it won't start, to whack it with a broomstick. Okay. And see, or a baseball bat. Baseball bat is better. Full swing is not necessary. <laughs> All you want to do is give it a good tap, I would say from about a foot. Boom! With the end of the baseball bat. With the key held all the way to the start position. And if the thing starts right up, that's what you need is a new starter motor. Oh, okay. Good luck, Dana. Thanks. Enjoy the hey, magnolia. Have a good summer. Okay, you too. Goof Bye-bye. Off. Thanks what are you for do? What are you going to do all summer? Um, I'm going to Ireland in July. Ireland. No kidding. Yes. You have relatives there? Yes, I do. No kidding. I didn't know there was yeah. Southern Irelanders. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad's from Philadelphia. Oh, that explains great. it. Well, have a great time. <laughs> Thanks. Think about us. Okay, I will. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, it's happened again. You vaporized yet another hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, Bongo Boy. But he just can't shake that Bongo <laughs> Boy image. It's so perfect. Bongo Boy Berman. <laughs> Our associate producers are David the Cavs of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. <laughs> Our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from his triumphant rematch at the Trenton Transmission Rebuilders Tapas Entangled <laughs> Tournament, <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. <laughs> Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Margin Overa. Our customer care representative is Haywood Jabuzoff. Our in-house literary critic is Al Ligori. Mm. Al Ligori, and mm, very good. Our director of allergy research is Teresa Paulinating. Our Elvis impersonator from the Cairo office is Amal Shukup. Our director of summer visits to the in-laws is Don Juan Go. Our Russian gas station attendant is Philip and Topitov. Our Russian chauffeur is peak off and drop off, and our seat cushion tester is Mike Easter. Our chief counsel from the law firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe is you, Lewis Dewey, known to the Cambridge Police Department Special Bongo Noise Abatement Unit <laughs> in Harvard Square as Huey Louie Dewey. Thanks so much for listening. We're Click and Clack the Tappet Brothers. And remember, don't drive like my brother. Remember, don't drive like my brother. We'll be back next week. Bye bye. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, and WBUR in Boston. And even though mayors in at least two villages look up and say, Are we missing our idiot whenever they hear us say it? This is NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from TIAA. Committed to the idea that while most things in life run out, from clean shirts in the morning to a favorite dessert at night, 